Greetings, this is Jeff Riddle from Christ Reformed Baptist Church in Louisa, Virginia. This is an audio version of a book review that I have written. The book that is under review is by Alan J. McGregor, titled Three Modern Versions, subtitled A Critical Assessment of the NIV, ESV, and NKJV. It was published by the Bible League in 2004 and is 126 pages in length. This book review first appeared in the Reformed Baptist Trumpet, Volume 2, Number 1 in 2011, and it can be found on pages 15 through 19. Here now is the review. Introduction. This helpful book provides a clear and thorough critique of three modern translations the NIV, ESV, and NKJV. McGregor is pastor of Wickford Reformed Baptist Church in Essex, England, and a member of the Bible League Council. He makes plain from the outset his commitment to the traditional text of the Bible and his preference in particular for the authorized version or King James Version. Though this, his review is not sympathetic to the contemporary translations which he reviews, the author's spirit and tone is ironic throughout. Here is an example from the preface where he says, quote, I do not assert, as some do, that there is nothing good in these versions. I believe it is right to acknowledge that they have certain strengths and, on occasions, improved renderings. It does not weaken the AV case to say so. Many sincere believers use the NIV and the NKJV, and now some the ESV. I do not dismiss them as worldly or heretical, as some of the extreme defenders of the authorized version do. However, I do believe that the majority of NIV, ESV, and NKJV users are unaware of vital and worrying facts concerning these versions. McGregor makes the point that the primary issues in choosing a good translation concern both its accuracy and the manuscripts on which the translation is based. Content, part one. The book consists of eight primary chapters and can be divided into two main parts. In part one, chapters one through four, the author deals with introductory issues. Chapter one is titled, The Question of Manuscripts. Here, McGregor argues that the concerns raised and discussions undertaken about Bible translation and texts are not irrelevant or outdated exercises. Critics of modern translations cannot be brushed off as traditionalists who are fighting old battles. See pages 7 and 12. Chapter 2 is titled, The Westcott and Hort Text. In this section, McGregor examines the weight that Westcott and Hort gave the codices Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, noting that many of the textual variations in these Alexandrian texts were theologically driven. Chapter 3 is titled, Westcott and Hort Disguising Their Divergence. Here the author charges Westcott and Hort both with ignoring their original charge mildly to revise the standard authorized version and with attempting to disguise or minimize the extent of their departure from the traditional text. This was done in part by moving from a verse-by-verse -verse to a paragraph format. He also charges them with attempting cleverly to manipulate the truth by claiming that their changes amounted to, quote, hardly more than a thousandth part of the entire text, end quote, page 22. McGregor concludes that such a statement is essentially dishonest since, quote, the truth of the matter is that Westcott and Hort's Greek manuscript is a radical departure from the received text, end quote, page 23. He even suggests that these men use their expert status to sway many of their contemporaries, including even C.H. Spurgeon. Finally, McGregor points out that many have defended Westcott and Hort and their new text as following in the line of men like Jerome, Erasmus, and the King James Version translators themselves, who put aside tradition to seek truth despite criticism and opposition from conservatives who wanted to hold on to their old Bibles. This argument is historically confused. Erasmus was trying to get behind the Latin to the original languages. The KJV translators were making use of essentially the same base texts 
of the Bible as Erasmus and did not face great opposition to their work. See page 28. Again, the issue is the text. McGregor contends that in the end, quote, the Westcott and Hort text appears to be a return to almost the very text which was discarded by those who brought about the Reformation, end quote, page 29. In chapter 4, titled Methods of Translation, the author briefly sketches the differences between formal and dynamic equivalents and makes clear his preference for the formal or word-for-word -word method. Content, Part 2. In Part 2, chapters 5 through 8, the author provides a detailed review of the three modern English translations, the NIV, ESV, NKJV, and concludes with a review of the King James Version. Chapter 5, the NIV, or New International Version. Here is a summary of McGregor's critique. 1. The NIV follows the Westcott and Hort influence modern critical Greek text. 2. As with other modern versions, it uses the paragraph method. Whatever the perceived merits of distinguishing poetry and prose, it disguises textual omissions. 3. It uses dynamic equivalents. 4. This leads to, quote, wholesale rejection of words and even phrases, end quote, in addition to omissions due to textual issues. 5. The NIV is influenced by modern copyright and its relationship to publishing profit. Lastly, he discusses the recent publication of the TNIV and gender neutrality. Chapter 6, the ESV or the English Standard Version. Here is a summary of McGregor's critique. 1. Its copyright mentions the National Council of Churches. Quote, this liberal organization is not a friend of evangelical reform theology. End quote, page 58. 2. It makes use of Westcott and Hort's in influenced modern critical Greek text. 3. It uses the paragraph layout method. 4. While it improved many of the liberal readings of the RSV or Revised Standard Version upon which it is based, it, quote, generally sticks too closely to the original RSV translation, and therefore the text is still tainted by liberal theology, end quote, page 59. 5. Though purporting to be a literal translation, quote, it sometimes uses gentle neutral terms instead of showing fidelity to the sacred text, end quote, page 59. His conclusion, quote, despite all the hype and glowing statements about the ESV, it fails to deliver on its promises. It is, in reality, nothing more than a very mild revision of a very liberal Bible version. While there are some pleasing improvements over the RSV, Revised Standard Version, not all the changes are for the better. By using the RSV as a reference point, the translators have started in the wrong place. The leaven of liberalism is still there. The conclusion of the matter must be that it is weighed in the balances and found wanting. End quote, page 59. Chapter 7, the NKJV, or the New King James Version. Here is a summary of McGregor's critique. Number 1, the NKJV departs from the TR by alteration, addition, or omission of words in about 1,200 places. Number 2, it makes use of extensive textual footnotes. Quote, Surely, constantly referring the reader's attention to these footnotes is bound to put doubts into their minds as to the preservation and authenticity of the Word of God. End quote, page 62. Three, though it claims to build on the merits of the authorized version, it often sides with modern readings. So, for example, dumb and deaf in Mark 9.25 becomes deaf and dumb, agreeing with the NIV. Number four, rejection of many words in the authorized version, but more seriously in traditional text. For example, the New King James Version avoids use of the word reprobate for the Greek term adokimos. See page 72. Five, omission of words and phrases. For example, to do them in Deuteronomy 27.26. It often omits a translation of the conjunction chi, and, in the Gospel of Mark. 6. Confusing use of oblique text for Old Testament quotations and italic text for added words not in the original language text. 
This can lead to mistaking one for the other. Seven, capitalization of pronouns for the deity can lead to confusion and misinterpretation. Chapter eight, the AV or the authorized version. In the final chapter, McGregor offers a critique of the authorized version. He points out that the AV was providentially translated at a time when there were men of such scholarly stature as has never again been met or surpassed. In particular, the translators had not been infected by higher criticism. This does not mean that McGregor is a KJV onlyist. He writes, quote, Now the question on your lips might be, are you suggesting that the AV is perfect and needs no alteration? The answer is no. Neither I nor the Council of the Bible League hold to the view that the AV is perfect and needs no emendation. End quote, page 93. He acknowledges that there have been various editions and revisions of the AV since 1611, most dealing with, quote, emendation of printing errors, standardizing the use of italics and spelling, correcting punctuation, and updating certain words, end quote, page 95. He continues, quote, I repeat, I am not against a mild and sympathetic revision such as was carried out by Blaney, end quote, page 97. Note, Blaney's 1769 edition was the so-called final revision, giving us the AV as we have it today. McGregor suggests, for example, that words like public, P-U-B-L-I-C-K, heretic, H-E-R-E-T-I-C-K, and music, M-U-S-I-C-K, could have their spelling updated, see page 97. Other words might have been updated. Examples he gives include the word menish, to diminish in Exodus 5.19, whist to new, for example, in Exodus 16.15, and beray, that's B-E-W-R-A-Y, to betray in Isaiah 16.3. He laments that such a minimal revision of the AV was derailed by Westcott and Hort. Such might have taken place in 1881, quote, in the same sympathetic manner as Blaney's work, in quote, page 98. Alas, the duplicity of Westcott and Hort, quote, has made many godly people very weary of any other update, in quote, page 98. He concludes, quote, even the AV now stands, even as the AV now stands, we believe it is by far the safest and most accurate translation of the scriptures available to us. Such an honest, mild, sympathetic, God-fearing revision of it may be a long time coming. Many modern scholars are too radical in their revisions. We, however, should not be deterred from using the AV or encouraging others to use it. There are many who make the usual claims about the unintelligibility of the Old English, and yet children all over the English-speaking world learn Shakespeare at school without apparent difficulty and pass exams successfully. The language of the AV is simpler than Shakespeare's is, and Christians have the aid of the Holy Spirit to teach and enlighten them as to Scripture's meaning. Yet, they are deemed by many supporters of modern versions incapable of understanding the AV. Surely such a notion cannot be substantiated. End quote, page 99. Conclusion. In his conclusion, McGregor is sure to note his pray, that his praise of the AV is not to be misunderstood as KJV onlyism. He writes, quote, However, we must also say that believing the AV itself to be infallible and above improvement, commonly called KJV onlyism in the USA and AV onlyism in the UK, is an untenable position that only backs its advocates into a corner. It often leads to the same ungracious remarks that come from the more radical supporters of modern versions. End quote, page 100. That said, however, McGregor refuses to believe that raising serious questions about texts and translations is divisive. Contra, for example, the compilers of the book From the Mind of God to the Mind of Man, published in 1999. Yes, the gospel must be central, and we must preach Christ above all. Quote, but we are, going to, are we going to sit back and let the Reformation text disappear? In quote, page 100. The author makes the appeal that if we lose the use of the traditional text and of the AV translation, 
we will be losing a significant part of our Protestant heritage. The work concludes with an appendix that offers brief comment on nine related subjects. Number one, a defense of Erasmus. Number two, a critique of Westcott and Hort's so-called transcriptional probabilities. Three, a refutation of the idea that there is a modern Roman Catholic plot against the AV. Number four, a note on an early papyrus, fragment of Matthew that supports the traditional text, P64. Five, an evaluation of several expanded readings in non-TR texts. Six, a note on the NKJV-NIV use of the word servant rather than son, as it is in the, in the authorized version in Acts 3.13 and Acts 3.26. Seven, a note on the translation of 1 Corinthians 1.18. And eight, a note on the use of pronouns in the authorized version. And nine, a defense of the traditional ending of Mark. Final analysis. McGregor writes this book as a pastor and churchman and not as a credentialed textual critic toiling in the so-called academy. I see that as a plus and not a negative. He deals with complicated issues of text and translation in a popular and easily accessible manner. He defends the use of the traditional text of scripture and the venerable authorized version deftly and charitably. His critique of recent modern versions reveals a thoughtful and careful reading of these translations and not a knee-jerk rejection. Neo-evangelical Calvinists who have jumped on the ESV bandwagon in particular will do well to give careful consideration to McGregor's critique of this translation and the questions he raises both about its National Council of Churches copyright statement and its association with the liberal RSV translation. McGregor rejects the doctrinally and spiritually unhealthy aspects of the KJV-only movement while making a winsome appeal for the continued use of the traditional text of Scripture in general and for the authorized version translation in particular as the Reformed and Protestant legacy text and translation of choice. Many in our day are rediscovering Reformed theology. Will there, will there also be a rediscovery of the Reformed Bible? Here ends the review. You can receive audiobook reviews and book notes like this one, Word Magazine podcasts and sermons by subscribing to Christ Reformed Baptist Church's sermon audio feed on iTunes by searching for Christ Reformed Baptist Church. For video material, you can subscribe to the Word Magazine channel on youtube.com. You can also find written book reviews, book notes, and articles on my blog, jeffriddle.net.